Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and at long last, we have a brand new Bionicle Fanon review, where I'll be taking a look at the winner of our third Bionicle Fanon contest, focused on the Dark Hunter Lariska. In case you aren't aware, I've been running Bionicle Fanon contests for about a couple of years now, where Makis combined their skills to create their depictions of characters who appeared in the Bionicle storyline, but never actually got official sets. This is not affecting canon in any way, it's really just for fun, and kind of just a way for folks to kind of depict what they imagine characters to be and have the community vote on their headcanon. And you all voted for this model by Jero100 to be the winner of the Lariska Fanon Contest, so I am so excited to showcase it today. You can actually see Lariska right here, where I've put her on the shelf, right next to, of course, you have Toa Likon and Toa Tuyet, and eventually Toa Nadiki, who was the winner of the fifth Fanon Contest whenever I get to building him, will also be here, because I feel like that paints a really good scene for Metro Nui. But with that, I think it's time we jump right into the review of Jiro 100's Lariska, the winning model from the third Duck Breaks Fanon Contest. Let's go. Okay, at long last, we have Lariska the Huntress by Jiru100, the winner of our third Bionicle Fanon Contest, hosted here on Duck Breaks. It has been a very long road to getting this review out, and my apologies for all the delays. The Lariska contest happened, and then there were many other contests afterwards, and eventually I got very, very busy, but finally I was able to actually have this be fully built and reviewed, and I'm so excited to be able to showcase it for all of you. So first of all, we're going to be going through this with all of our main points as we usually do for Bionicle fan and reviews. Number one, posability. Number two, aesthetics. Number three, building techniques. And number four, believability in universe, which is particularly relevant because obviously this is meant to be a fan and contest, aka you are depicting a character which has been described in the books. So starting off with posability, Lariska here has a wide range of posability and is actually really stable on the feet that I've been built for it, which is really nice to see. Even though the feet are pretty thin, you can get a lot of different poses out of the legs here. Now, obviously you can get this all sorts of articulated, which is what you really want to see for a creature like Lariska, who is very agile. I wonder if I can get it to stand on one leg. Ah, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, that's cool. That was like, I didn't even have to try. Like, this is really posable. You can obviously bend the knees any way you want. The feet can be bent. Even the toes can be individually bent. And there is actually a lot of friction here. So if you wanted to make Lariska balance on like one of the toes or be running and have one of the toes upwards like that, you could probably get a pose like that to work. Let me see if I can do that and just have the angle right. Yeah, there you go. So it is so posable and that is something I really do appreciate. Of course, both of the arms do move about as much as you would expect, so you've got like a ball joint here, which can move the upper robotic arm back in front. One thing that I find to be really interesting is the way that the robotic arm can actuate. I really like how poseable this is using the slightly flexible type of Technic link arm here, but because it's using the link arm, you can bend it back and forth, but also up and down. It feels like you've got some sort of piston mechanical motion that is built into the design itself, which is very, very cool. The hand on the robotic end is almost a little bit too simple for me, to be completely honest. It's literally just a Hordika neck with a little bit of a connector on there for the daggers, but I guess it gets the job done okay for a mechanical hand, and with the dagger in the hand, it's not that big of a deal. The other hand, you can basically just move normally like you would with any other Bionicle type of figure. You've got an elbow joint here. It is a very unorthodox construction in the arm itself, but I think it makes sense because Lariska is supposed to be a pretty unique type of build for a character, and that's one thing that I find to be really interesting. Now, on the back here, you can see that you have some storage for the daggers on the back as well. So if you wanted to be able to wield daggers, you just take them out, remove the Technic pins with them, and you can take one of the daggers like this and place it in Lariska's hand. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the mechanical hand just so we can get this fully armored up and fully weaponed up. Now on the back with the daggers removed, I think it looks generally totally okay. The only big complaint that I have about the way that this personally is set up is that it's kind of weird. Like the way that this hose fits in, it's not meant to fit into this piece. This is just a Technic pin to uh, axle converter. And once it's inside this piece, it does not actually accept hoses. Like this is not meant to accept bars or anything you can kind of wedge in the tip of it because it's rubberized, but you are actively damaging, like you are stressing the pieces by doing this. And I also can't get it in more than a little bit. 
I mean, I'm really pressing hard. This is about the most I can get it in, so obviously not really meant for the pieces to work like that, and it also feels kind of awkward to me that on the back, I'm just gonna pop off the legs so you can see this better, you have this very awkward back end piece sticking out. I don't really know why they didn't just use a standard pin and just have kind of a regular washer around it because then that would have accepted the tube just fine, or plug the tube directly in here. I think there were a couple of different ways that that issue could have been resolved. Right here it feels awkward like she has a rod sticking out of the, her rear end there, and it also just doesn't work that well for attaching the tube, so personally I'm not really sure why exactly that's there. Otherwise, though, I think the building techniques and the way the posability works is generally good. One thing I didn't mention is the posability of the head, which moves around just as much as you would expect. You cannot open or close the mouth, but I think that's totally fine, because that's really all you need in terms of a character like this, is to have it look back and forth. Now, in terms of building techniques, which building techniques is point two, I think I said aesthetics is point two, doesn't really matter, we're gonna hit all of them anyway. Building techniques of this is really good, and there's a reason why this won the fanon contest. You can see how much effort was put into depicting this character and having a very uniquely crafted torso around the character itself. I love the usage of the smaller Technic panels in teal, they look really good shaped around the body. I also find it really interesting how there's even some rubber tires inside the body itself. If we zoom into the torso construction, this is not simple at all. You've got rubber tires, you've got system elements which are angled here and here to really just be kept in place, you've got some metallic drum lacquered silver elements going around, of course the tubes snaking down the entire body, you've got more system covering it up here, and given that there are not a lot of regular bionicle elements in teal, the designer did a really good job of actually putting this together with a lot of effort and care and trying to make the color blocking feel like Lariska has obviously teal armor but stripes of black running through the body which really adds to the very unique color scheme. I also love the way the mechanical arm is done. I talked about this a little bit in the posability section, but I just love that you can actually see that piston moving up and down as you rotate the arm. As you bend it back and forth, it kind of bends the bar in a more interesting way. It's just so cool having that actually be something that fully functions, and I'm a fan of how they were able to pull that off. Now, the only thing that I will say is that the hands are a little bit iffy, at least for the robotic end for me. I think the building technique is almost too simple for the hand on the robotic arm. Just being a standard neck, I'm not really seeing a hand there. It does work a lot better with the dagger, though, because then it feels like the dagger is actually part of the body. And one thing I do appreciate is how the daggers can actually be rotated, almost like they are about to be thrown. Lariska does often use throwing daggers, so... Obviously, you've got these specialized daggers here that you can use to hurl at your opponents, which is very, very cool. And of course, you have it on the other hand as well. With the dagger removed, let me go ahead and take that out for now. You have a pretty standard building technique that we've seen across a lot of Bionicle mocks, and even Hydraxon used something similar to this, where you've got the claws on this end, so it is a three-fingered hand moving around that system piece which is kept in place by the clip and the stud connection, as well as another opposing hand here, so that's how that is all set up. And then, with the daggers placed in the back, we can showcase what that looks like, where you can either have the dagger sticking up or sticking down, no matter how you want to have things set up. So let's say, for example, you want to have the daggers placed in this position. You can really just attach them onto the back like so, so you've got the daggers stored away. Or alternatively, there are Technic pins, so if you wanted to store the daggers on the hips like this, then you could do that. Personally, I think it would have been cool if the model actually included multiple different daggers. I mean, obviously, you, it is a mock. You can just build more. But I think it would have been cool if Lariska was just absolutely covered in daggers. Like, she's got daggers on the sides, daggers on the backs, and then even holding it. She is six or something, because she does throw quite a lot. But I think you can very easily just recreate them on your own dime if you wanted to give this model more characteristics and more weapons to attack with. So that works out totally well. Now... Overall, in terms of aesthetics, I'll have to say that completely agnostic of the believability in-universe, aesthetically speaking, this is a really interesting model. You have, obviously, one arm is robotic, and it really feels like there is an intentional asymmetry to how everything is put together, which is obviously the point of Lariska, is that she has this 
robotic arm that she's using on one side, and then you have the more natural arm here, and while they do share some sort of biological similarities in the way that it feels like this is a robotic version of this, they definitely have a lot of differences, where this clearly has a lot of exposed pieces, like there's exposed holes, there's exposed axles, and whatnot, which really makes it feel more mechanical, versus this one feels more streamlined. If you look at the arm here, you're using the smooth Technic panels. A lot of the holes are covered up by pins. I love the dichotomy between looking at one arm versus the other because there is a clear difference between the two of them that really makes the character stand out and adds more, well, character to this character. Overall, for the rest of the aesthetics, I almost feel like the legs are deer-like. It's almost like a gazelle in the way that the feet are set up. You have this curve to it, and it really does feel like a female character with larger thighs, and you have slimmer lower legs here, which is a very nice detail and design for the character itself. And of course, having those daggers mounted on the sides of the legs is my personal favorite position to leave the daggers because you feel like Lariska is always at the ready. You've got daggers right on the side, and I actually feel the back is a little less cluttered because the daggers are not on the back. I kind of prefer it that way. Obviously, aesthetics are not perfect. I definitely feel like this is really awkward. Like, I just don't really like how that is done. And then this back here feels like... You have a lot of pieces here, and I don't really know if these are really adding a ton to the set, other than just adding a little bit of bulk to the back, which I guess makes sense, you don't want it to be too thin, but I feel like there could have been something else more interesting done here, and the exposed axle sticking out of the top of the head is not that great either. Otherwise, though, I just think that this is admittedly a very, very good model. I mean, I do really like the way that it's done. It obviously one for a reason, and I think the head design is also really cool. I love the way that the head is clearly featuring eyes, a mouth, and a face. That is something that really does stand out, and it's hard to do when you're building a Bionicle-type character that isn't wearing a mask, so I do appreciate that. And with that, we can go down to believability in-universe. To do this, I've brought alongside Toa Likon, because I feel like that is a pretty perfect character to pose alongside Lariska, and see how they skill together as an official set with a comparison. One thing I like is that they're right around the same height. Lariska is not comically large, nor is she too small. She's about the right height that I was imagining she would be next to Toa Likon, who's basically just a standard style of build. I really like how well this complements existing set builds, where it doesn't feel too over-detailed, you are still using very similar pieces, obviously there's a little bit of extra detail, you've got some system pieces here and the torso feels very unique, but it doesn't go way too far in one direction where it doesn't feel like it's part of the Bionicle world. You have recognizable working pistons, you've got the tubes, you have a lot of recognizable Bionicle elements being used in the construction of the character, which makes this feel like it does fit in the world very well. Do I believe this could have been a set? Definitely not. I mean, it's definitely using a lot more interesting techniques than standard sets. You've got very complex arms, you have a really unique torso construction that is built around a Hordika torso, but really pushes it far beyond that. You have a nice head construction, but in spite of all these extra details, in spite of all the system pieces and the other elements scattered throughout, it still retains that Bionicle look and feel, and that is really important to me. Of course, the other point that we have to talk about when it comes to the actual believability in-universe is how closely does this actually resemble the Riska? Because this was a contest for fans to submit what they thought is their version of Lariska. And I'm pretty happy to say that I think this matches the prompt really well. So going through the quotes from Greg Farshti, the prompt for the contest was that Lariska must be an agile and graceful mercenary with a mechanical left arm wielding twin protosteel daggers. It is recommended that she be using a teal or dark bluish green armor, is approximately the size of a Toa, which is a direct quote from Greg, and that is pretty much perfect. Like, this is approximately the size of a Toa, uses teal armor, you've got the mechanical arm, and I think it really works very well in terms of what we have seen from the actual sets themselves. Specifically, she has been stated to be the size of a Toa, so I really like how well Lariska scales next to a standard Metru build, they feel like they belong in the same world together. Overall, I think that this absolutely achieved the prompt, which was to build your own version of Lariska, matching what you would expect to see in the Bionicle world. It is really cool in the way that this is posed, I like that you can actually get this in so many interesting poses, and you can play around with it. She feels like a slim and lithe hunter, which is a really good design aspect that you want to see out of a Lariska build, and overall, I'm really happy with how this model turned out. And so, 
now that we can give our points on critiques, and of course I can share my points on pros and cons, let's bring it all the way back and talk about the posability. So posability wise, this is a really fun and posable build. There are so many poses that you can achieve. You can even, despite there being a working piston, actuate the arm up and down just fine. Like that is a really cool thing to be able to do. I really love that you can do that. You can even, as I showcased at the beginning of the review, have Lariska balancing on one leg. There are so many unique things that can be done with this model that make it really stand out compared to a lot of the other models that you would see out there in terms of posability. And honestly, I literally have no complaints. Like, posability-wise, I cannot complain about a model that is this posable. I'm gonna have to give posability a 10 out of 10 if I can't think of anything bad to say, and maybe there is nothing bad about it. So let me see if I can actually get it into the pose that it was using for the submission, which was, I think, a lot of the, the details of these and a lot of the votes really boil down to the presentation of the model. And how good does the model look in the pose that you've put it in? So, I'm gonna try to get this crouched down here. It's not quite perfect because I'm not a, a master poser like the builder of the model, but okay, that's pretty close to the actual submission photo where she's crouched down, preparing to strike. I think that is a really good look for the character. That just looks really cool. It's very engaging how you can get it in this kind of pose. And then we can move on to building techniques. So building techniques, I was mostly impressed by the construction. The torso is great from the front, the back, honestly, probably the weakest part of the model. The back of the torso just doesn't really feel that good to me. I'm just not the biggest fan of the way the back of the torso turned out. Not a huge deal, just something I figured I would point out. The mechanical arm, very cool. The building techniques are great. I like the color blocking and the choices in pieces to actually enhance the colors of the build, having one side be mechanical, one side be organic. But there are some oddities, right? There's some of the weird stuff in the way that that tube doesn't really attach inwards to that piece that well. There's the awkward part sticking out, and then there's this kind of clump of pieces on the top where I'm not really sure what that is supposed to convey other than just adding more bulk. So I personally would give building techniques an 8 out of 10. And this is in comparison to some of the best Bionicle mocks out there. This is not based on a set scale. I tend to judge things differently if it's a mock versus a set, especially if it's a mock for a contest, but I think it's still a really impressive build and I'm really happy with the building techniques. Aesthetically speaking, this is really solid. Again, that mechanical arm really does sell the aspect of this being a specialized kind of hybrid cyborg type of character. You have so much posability and the aesthetics are really enhanced by how much posability you can get out of this. The usage of minifigure skis as the toes makes this character feel lithe and agile and that's really very cool. Of course, aesthetically, there are some things that do stand out, again, namely these, like these just don't really look that good to me, and I definitely feel like the hands could have been at least a little bit improved, especially with the robotic hand here being basically just a Hordika neck. That feels a little bit too much like it's too simple compared to the rest of the build, but otherwise, aesthetics are really solid, and I really like the way the head's done, so I think another 8 out of 10. And finally, in terms of believability in-universe, well, look, there's a reason why this won the votes for the Lariska Fanon Contest. You showed up and you voted for this to be the most accurate looking Lariska, and I can't argue with the voters. I mean, if the voters are saying that is what it is, then it is to be. And I think I basically have been voted into saying this is a 10 out of 10 in terms of looking like Lariska because we ran the most rigorous thing that we could do, basically having a contest of, is this believable in universe? Well, one first place for being believable in universe. So obviously, easy 10 out of 10. Well done to Jero100 for building such a great mock. This is so much fun to play around with and pose, and I'm really glad to have been finally able to add this to my collection. So thanks all to everybody who competed in the fandom contest, and I'm really curious, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of the model? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Were you rooting for any of the other builds? How do you think those stack up compared to this one? And definitely stay tuned for more Bionicle fandom contests. I'm not quite sure when the review of this is going to be published, because I'm recording this in February, but... Whenever this gets published, we are going to be running the Golden Skinned Being Contest at some point this summer, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.
All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the winner of the Duck Bricks Bionicle Fanon Contest number three for Lariska the Dark Hunter. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the model. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Were you rooting for maybe any of the other models to win, or are you happy with the overall winner? Again, this was completely voted in by the fans, so thank you so much for everybody who voted, who participated, who sent in entries. These Fanon Contests are a really fun way to unite the community, and I am having so much fun running them. Stay tuned for the future because we will be running, if not started already, the Golden Skinned Being Fanon Contest. That is going to be a really big one. I am so excited for that one to come out. So definitely stay tuned for that. And thanks so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thank you so much and bye for now.